love doing that. <laughs> I want to welcome everybody on this cold night to uh, the November school board meeting. And um, we don't have our vice chair here for roll call, but I think I can call it pretty quick. Um, Ms. Parker is not here. Ms. Hopkins is not here. Mr. Pennings is not here. Mr. Moore is not here. Mr. Atkins is not here. But the rest of us are all here. <laughs> which is uh, Mr. Sims, Mr. Beaver, Mr. Howe, Ms. Morenci, and Mr. Dudley and myself. Now, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. It's going to be led by Santa Fe Unit School, correct? <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We always want to remind the board of our, and you as well, of our mission. Um, Looking now at the agenda, uh, it, I will entertain anyone who wants to add something, but there is something that I think that I would like to add to the agenda. In the work session, we had a discussion and, uh, about the, 19, the calendar for school year 1920. Um, that was, if you remember it, Carl Lang ex discussed it with him. We, I actually uh, added it to the thought I did to the consent and somehow it wasn't we didn't notice that it wasn't on the board agenda um, until it was too late to add it so I would uh, move that we add to the agenda uh, to the consent agenda it would be 3.20 the amending of the 1920 calendar and if you don't remember it uh, as it was presented it was a request by the Murray County Fair Board to uh, uh, that was recommended so the children would be able to attend the fair during the week and it would simply change the professional de development day to uh, September the 3rd from wh where it was previously. Betty? Yes. I had asked that that not be um, put on the consent agenda. Okay, well then, then that's if that's wasn't. the case, well then it, it's, it's just not on the agenda anyway. Okay. So we're going to put it down. If, if my motion is then that rather than put it there, we would put it at the end of new business. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, and that would be item number four. Now, but this requires a motion to do that and, uh, and a vote. So is there a second? Mr. Beaver seconds the motion. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, then we will add it to new business. Um, Staff reporting. We're good. I thought you were going to introduce Mr. Hubble. Uh, that's during recognition. Tomorrow. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, Murray County Education Association. Comes up fast tonight. Happy Thanksgiving, folks. I want to uh, thank, first of all, the uh, special questions committee committees one really but uh, there's elements of the board and elements of the teachers uh, particularly Jim Pennings, David Moore, and Betty Kinzer and then for teachers uh, Stephanie Newland, Deborah Shaw and Kaylee Haynes for the the great job they did recently uh, before the break uh, they it moves quickly uh, smoothly the voting went well uh, for the balloting and they counted it well everybody got along and it was wonderful it was a, a great event just appreciate the the spirit of cooperation that they had with each other and and some humor apparently too so that's good um, we're looking at January we we're hopeful that we will all be ready by then to uh, sit back down at the table I wanted um, and and one thing that I I don't know if I would do that through you Betty or who you would choose that I would begin to we begin to work together on some possible dates to meet and so forth but um, anyways I do have something I want to offer you and uh, it is um, 
training options for collaborative conferencing. There are three organizations in Tennessee that offer training. Now, we've done this in the past. I don't know if Ms. Kinzer, you did that, but um, there are three available, and I'll give you the sheets. We can go over these real quickly and have these. While you're doing that, uh, Mr. Pennings is our chair, and I would thank all communication and uh, with, through him. Uh, TA on there. Um, theirs is free. It is very impartial. A lot of people think they can tell you. You could check, I guess, with other districts. It's not done to bias either side. It's free. It's three hours. You can train an individual team. In other words, they could just train us or train y'all, or they could train both at the same time. We propose joint training. There are a second option of federal mediation and conciliation services, which is a mouthful. Uh, there's a commissioner for that, and it's free. It's seven and a half hours and they may require both teams, it depends. The other one is uh, TOS TOS, Tennessee Organization of School Superintendents, and that is about $1,200 to $3,000 per team. So if you had two teams, it could happen in the thousands. I'm not gonna press you, that's not my role, to press you to choose any one of those, but I think the training would do us good beforehand uh, so the spirit's better and we understand some of the rules and how to engage in collaborative conferencing, go over the law and things like that. But that's something you'll have to decide uh, for the board. I can't, I can't do that for you. So uh, meanwhile, we're slowly assembling our team of seven people to represent at the table. And if you'll kind of, kind of get that information to Mr. Pennings, uh, we'll go from there. Um, any questions about the sheet I gave you or anything else? Thank you. Right. Again, thank you very much. A good spirit. Appreciate it. It's been wonderful. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hubner. Uh, recognition and announcements. Yes, thank you very much, Ms. Kinzer. I'd like to bring Mr. Randy Hubble up, who is here to talk a little bit about Santa Fe Unit School. Mr. Hubble, the mic's yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm not really sure what all I'm supposed to talk about, but if anybody asks me to talk, I'll talk. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to uh, thank the young men and women who came in to uh, do the pledge for us. Uh, that was our <coughs> middle school student council. That was our president, Hannah Fitzgerald, our seventh grade rep, uh, Jacob Beard, sixth grade rep, Emily Alvarez, and then two students off Dr. Marzak's student advisory council, which was Shelby Rector and Camden Cooper. Uh, as I go through this presentation, just telling you a little bit about Santa Fe School and some of the accomplishments that they've had, uh, we're going to go back to last spring and talk about some of those. I'm going to be throwing some statistics out to you, and I'm going to try not to give you any bad statistics, but I've typed this, so it could be some typos in here. And what I want you to know is, when I was in college, my geography professor told me there were three kinds of liars in the world, and I'm going to clean this up a little bit. He said there were liars. There were dang liars, and there were statisticians. So if, if I give you a bad statistic, it's not because I'm a liar, it's because I'm a bad typist. Uh, Santa Fe Unit School last year scored the highest in the county on state exams in high school math with a score of 35.9 on track of mastered. To put things in perspective, the state average was 22.5. So they did a tremendous job in high school math. They also received the highest score in high school English in the county. They also received the highest score in high school science in the county. They, Santa Fe Unit School also scored the highest in the county in grades three through five science with a score of 71.7. The state average was 56. They scored the highest in the county in grades six through eight English language arts at 38.8, .8, above the state average of 32.1. And last but not least, Santa Fe Unit School scored the highest in the county in six through eight math. They also earned the highest level of academic achievement that you can get uh, in the state by being a level five school. So they did a tremendous job on the state testing last year. 
Uh, this year's seniors have an AC composite of 20, which I believe ranks us second in the county. And uh, we're going to continue to make that rise. We have some good programs in place where we're uh, working with the students on a daily basis. And we're going to continue to challenge those students to get better. We've increased the number of teachers offering AP classes as well as dual credit. We have great community involvement uh, with our school. A good example of that is our fall festival that we uh, had, one of the first events that I got to attend. As a matter of fact, I think uh, my second day on the job was Harvest Festival Day, so that was a, a good way to get broke in. We had a lot of community support with that. Our cafeteria not only fed our students, but they invited and fed a majority of the community uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, our Skills USA competition, uh, held the Skills USA competition at Santa Fe Unit School this year. We had a lot of uh, robotics and uh, robots doing different tricks and whatnot. It was a pretty, pretty amazing thing if you got to get down and see that. We're in the process of redesigning our performing and visual arts programs to allow for more student uh, involvement in it through greater access to these programs by offering uh, programs after school. Uh, we're hoping by doing this we can get some of the students who aren't involved in sports and other activities, give them a chance to get involved in more at our school. Our Santa Fe Ag Department does community service work by repairing equipment for students in the community at for whatever it costs, and it gives the students some good uh, work skills and uh, also helps the community out too. Um, Ethan Thompson, a senior for us, won Dr. Marzak's first vocabulary bowl, which we're proud of, and he won a $500 scholarship for that. Athletics, uh, last year they were champions of the first ever countywide basketball tournament by our middle school girls. Uh, our girls, when they put the small schools and the large schools together, our girls still whip, whipped them, so uh, real proud of them. Our middle school boys last year had an undefeated season. Our cross-country teams, we got some good cross-country teams because we got some good country, com beautiful country to run through, so they run through it a lot, and they get really good at it. Uh, our middle school boys were countywide champions. Our girls were countywide champions. Both of those went on to represent us in the state tournament. Our high school girls cross country won the regional tournament and finished 11th in the state. And uh, E.J. Hill went to the state tournament and represented us in golf. In summation, I want to uh, thank the school board, central office for all you do to support uh, Santa Fe Unit School and all the other schools in the community. I also want to give an extra shout out to the people of the community, not just Santa Fe, but all the people in Murray County who support our schools, our schools through donations and whatnot. Uh, the, other, the other evening, Miss Inc., who is over our middle school student council, they're getting ready to have a dance. Uh, and I hate dances, but they're gonna have a dance. <laughs> and uh, she was getting supplies at the Dollar Tree I think she was trying to buy every snowflake they had for the dance, for decorations. And there was some woman in, uh, who saw her doing it and asked her why she was buying so many snowflakes. And she explained to her about how excited the students were about they were organizing their own dance. They were going to have this dance. And she was buying some supplies for them. It, come, it was about $35 worth of snowflakes. And the lady behind her paid for the snowflakes for the school. So we get that kind of stuff all the time from the people in our community. It's a great community, a great county, great people, just a great place to be. Uh, so I'd just like to thank you for this opportunity. And when you get a chance, come out to Santa Fe and visit us. We'd love to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hubble. Very impressive, for sure. Uh, Charlie, Ms. Parker has arrived. I just want to make note of that. Also, uh, it's not on the agenda, but it, we sh it should be public delegations next, shouldn't it? Okay. Is there, can someone check to see if anybody has? Okay. All right. Then.
that's why it's not on the agenda. Uh, next, we have consent items. Uh, uh, is there a motion to accept the consent items? Consent items 1 through 19. Mr. Beavers, so moved. Is there a second? Uh, Mr. Sims, second the motion. Any discussion? Then we're ready to vote. Please vote. I vote yes. I'm sorry. For some reason, it kicked me off. Okay, that motion does pass. All right, the next uh, item on the uh, agenda is policy, and I believe uh, Mr. McConan that that was, am, am I correct? Yes. Uh, that came up at the work session. We felt like maybe you needed to explain that budget amendment to us, or why that policy was presented. Which policy are you referring to? Are we on 4.1 on the agenda? 2.2? 2.201. Okay. Uh, the change of, of the line item from major ca to transfer to major budget, budget category shall be made with the Deleting the oh, first here line. We go. I, is there an attachment for it that I could see? Because I'm under uh, use of facilities, and then there's final adoption. What in what order it is on the it, agenda. It, it's it's a there's not a lot in the policy, but I think you recommended deleting the line. Oh, <laughs> okay, I remember. I know uh -huh. exactly what you're talking about. Right. Uh, about the major category budget amendments. Uh, yes. So uh, I had an idea, uh, and and we had spoken about it in our initial implementation meetings that we would make it to where if we're doing a budget amendment between other contracted services and janitorial services, maybe they had underexpended uh, for a major category, a major function in one line item and had money left over but were fallen short in janitorial services, that budget amendment could be done in-house by the budget department. Still, all budget amendments affecting payroll line items, fund balance line items, um, anything that would move from one major category, say from my budget to uh, Ms. Alexander's budget. Those are all budget amendments that would still come forth to the school board as they always have been. But the minor budgets that have to do with supply, contracted services, other costs, uh, and capital line items that are within their major category can be swapped between those two. I have said all that to basically say, I'm still working with audit on this policy. Uh, I was under the impression that I could do it because I can do it at the county. <laughs> so uh, upon further research, uh, I was told to pump my brakes. So at this point in time, it, it, it is a something I would like to get finished and I would like to change. I think that it would make for a much more efficient operation. Uh, but until I get a response from uh, the comptroller's office, I would like to hang on for the moment. Are you withdrawing this? As yes, ma'am. Or if, can we postpone it to next month or possibly January? I have no problem with that. Any of you all as well? All right. I'm at the will of waiting on uh, their responses, and since they're auditing us now, they're busy. So. I, I, th I think I would rather it done right at the time that it's done. So that I we think don't so as well. as well. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Yes, ma'am. Well, my question was actually before you said that you were going to withdraw, but just so I have an idea when this does potentially come back up, um, how would we know if money's been moved and how much has been expended? Um, well, y y you know, it would be in your financial reports under expenditure detail, and any we can actually include in our reports any budget amendments that have been made 
and you can see the change in that budget. So you would definitely have visibility to what has been done. Uh, it just wouldn't come forward for approval if we were moving from uh, 302 advertising to 335 uh, building and maintenance repairs. Um, it basically, anything 300 object code and higher in that category can be moved as long as it's within, say, my budget, 72510. I can do that adjustment, but if I wanted to move some of my office supplies to Miss Alexander's budget, that would still have to come here. Any changes that touches any payroll line item would still come here. Any fund balance would still come here. Um, it's just taking away the minute, you know, the, the minutia of it, I guess. Uh, and if, you, if this board still wants visibility on every single budget amendment, that's fine by me. Um, the budget amendments that I, I'm speaking about that would be done in-house are currently budget amendments that do not go forward to the commission. So. So would we still see those budget amendments? We just wouldn't, would it just be like an FYI that yeah, you would do? Yeah, I or? could do that. Yeah, I could definitely put all the budget amendments that were done uh, without, y you know, needing school board approval and bring them if, if we went that route in the future. Okay. Sure. Okay. And then, like, you, you mentioned other contracted services. If we were moving something from... Uh, I don't know, textbooks to other contractors, would that be allowed? It would be allowed currently, yes. It, it, well, no, okay. not now, but if we went that route. If we yes. went that route, it would be. Yes, and if you would like visibility, say, and I'm not saying it's been a, it would or would not be approved, but if it did, I'd be happy to give a monthly uh, list of all the budget amendments. But uh, typically at the county, it's not the budget office saying, you know what, they need more money over there. Let's move it. No, we don't come up with that because people whose budgets they are are going to get upset. <laughs> that, that's how it ha that's how it is. So, without you know, it's always communication. Every Alive so we have Alaview. They can review budgets as they go now, and they can say, you know what, I, I don't know why, but I'm short in other contracted services, and I. I don't have any money in uh, instructional materials and supplies. Hey, Doug, can we do a budget amendment? I don't expect to spend any more money out of my other contracted services, and I need supplies. Well, since you bring up supplies and those, I remember last year we had a big adjustment that mm -hmm. we did, a big budget amendment, and I think that it, in, it dealt a lot with instructional materials or mm -hmm. instruction in general. So with that budget amendment, which you may or may not remember, but would that have to come before us? Right now, it certainly would. Um, but in the future? In the future, it would not maybe. have to, but I, I'm, I'm willing to give a report of any that occurred and answer any questions about any budget amendment for sure. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate you willing to be transparent about that. I will just yeah. say that going forward, I have some concerns, especially with the audit mm -hmm. that we got last year and with what we saw at the end of last year, and I know you weren't here, but moving, you know, over a million dollars, mm -hmm. you know, that, that just kind of, that frightens me a little bit, to be completely honest. And it wasn't something that we were doing in January. It was something mm -hmm. we were doing in June. And I'm not really understanding, I don't understand why departments didn't necessarily, you know, know things were supposed to be moved around until it seemed like the 11th hour. Right, and uh, that's the reason uh, to do this is it doesn't have to wait till e we can be proactive about um, moving budgets where they're yeah. where they're over. Um, but, but you have Alibi anyway, so I mean, aren't you looking at? I mean, every department essentially is looking at their budget and seeing where they are in relation to the budget that we passed and what they've correct. extended. Correct. Correct, and and these wouldn't be uh, so journal entries are moving the exact the expenditures from one line item to another. This is just moving the budget, the estimate, the control that's in place that you know. Uh, you can't always project for you know if we right. if we blow our utilities line item by you know three thousand dollars and we have we're we've got some room to move in another line item that it could be done um, but I, I understand your concern and um, I understand your position yeah I think I think one thing we may need to look at is board policy to see if if we're going to do it in that way that we 
even if it's FYI or something that we have it reflected in board policy. So for that reason, I think we'll put it on our work session to, to see just exactly what expectation we have from it. And then we'll we look forward, going forward to how you feel like it should be uh, addressed as well. Okay, Makes just sense so we have me. a better understanding of, of what, since we're so used to seeing it, and yet, yet at the same time, we mm -hmm. want you to be able to operate efficiently as well. Right, and uh, one more thing uh, towards uh, your comments, Ms. Parker, is um, as far as audit findings go in relation to the budget, you usually get an audit finding for blowing a budget. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get an audit finding for having uh, too much budget in one line item, um, just back to that point. Um, and hopefully we, you know, we have the funds to be able to budget adequately to fund our schools. You know, th that's the goal. So. Okay. Okay. Moving on, then. I just so uh, you recently sent out an email to uh, us, that, but the financials that through September. You want to give us kind of an update of where we are right now? You said you're just looking sure. at October and. Yeah. So I, uh, I kind of, you know screwed up. I should have had Mona add the financials to the agenda. Found that out today. Uh, but uh, I have emailed out the financials. You have your cash flow analysis there from September. These are all September items that you received tonight. You also have your expenditure detail. Something I would like for you to disregard that uh, we found in our executive meeting this morning, uh, Dr. Marzak brought up our fiscal year percentage column on those detail reports. Um, Skyward is not calculating those percentages properly. Uh, if you do the manual math, you take your fiscal year to date uh, total expenditure and you divide that by your revised budget, you should get your percentage. Well, it matches in some line items and in some line items it doesn't. Uh, we have added that to our uh, list of service calls to Skyward. So uh, ignore the fiscal year percentage column because some of them are off. Um, but the expenditures and the monthly activity, so year-to-date and monthly, are correct, and our revised budgets in there are correct. We have uh, journal entries and uh, budget amendments that have been entered that are not reflected here because they were entered after September. Uh, E-plan, for example, uh, some federal projects, budget amendments, and um, some journal entries as well. So those will be reflected in your October and November financials. Our October financials are finished. Uh, we got them finished. Actually, Eric sent it to me last Wednesday, just before we went on Thanksgiving break. So um, I'm reviewing those and going through those, and we will have those available by next board session as well. So, uh, and then hopefully we'll have November's by the. Uh, are we meeting in December? Okay, we are. Okay. We're meeting. Uh, work sessions the tenth. Okay. Meetings the seventeenth. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. I'll try my best to get November by that's, the 17th. And that's also a, a commission meeting night as well, I think. Great. Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> Just, I didn't want to, I made your night, right? <laughs> I tried cloning myself over the break. <laughs> it's still just me. This isn't my clone. It's just Doug. <laughs> Well, any, any other do any other board members have any questions? I know you hadn't had a chance to look at the financials, but uh, hopefully you can be at the work session. And we, if there are questions there, that that's where we try to, as you as you can see, we try to do as much work as we can there. Mm -hmm. um, well, seeing none, then thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, wait. Two point one. Did you two point one is the four point two point one budget amendment. That's uh, correct. I also have 3.6 budget amendments. 4.2.1, we're not going to vote on it, though. You, you said you're withdrawing it. No, this is, that's the policy. Oh, uh, talking about oh, a okay, different one. Me, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Um, it's really bad when I'm moving us too fast. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes. You want to speak to that as well? That's the budget amendment concerning. Yes, let me scroll down there. We do need to vote on that. Yes, these budget amendments are to amend Social Security, Medicare, and board member fees to align you all's pay with the county commission. And um, I tried to get that uh, in front of the county commission, but uh, since it had not run through either committees, um, it was kicked back. Kicked back. So 
they also wanted a, a budget amendment with it. Now we have one, so we'll have it at the admin committee meeting on the first Thursday of December. Okay, thank you. Are, is there a motion to approve? Mr. Dudley uh, moves we approve. Is there a second? Mr. Beaver, any discussion? Ms. Parker? I just do have a question about this. I see that we're taking it out of unassigned fund balance. That is correct. Is there nowhere else in the hundred plus million dollar budget to, f I mean, this is what, you're better at math than I am, but that's by Six. my math probably less than 0.01% of yeah. our budget. It, I mean, at this point, since every, everything's allocated towards something, um, any request going forward was not a, included in the original budget that was established. So at this point, going forward, um, if we do find savings, you know, I can reallocate the budget, but at this point, we have to take it out of fund balance. Did you ask anybody to look for a point zero one? 0.6% out of their budget? <laughs> I mean, I, I certainly could, um, but it, since this is uh, BOE and it's this specific major category, uh, any any amendment, like, like you are saying, uh, would have to come from someone else's budget. Um, mm -hmm. And it, at this point in time, I, I felt that unassigned fund balance is, is where it should come from. It's usually where uh, increases to budgets outside of their general funding would go. And I, um, I agree with that in theory, and I think going forward with you being involved in the budget process, I will feel a lot better about that. But considering the fact that you weren't involved in the budget process this past year, you don't really know what's necessarily in all these budgets. I mean, that's correct. you know what I mean as far as how it was developed, and I feel like it would be beneficial for, I mean, I'm just, I hate to go to the commission and ask to take money from fund balance mm -hmm. to pay us. I mean, we have a lot of needs, I feel like, for our students mm -hmm. that I would rather come ahead of a raise for me being here tonight. They took theirs out of fund balance as well. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, maybe they decided to do that. That's the amendment they went with. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, I have not gone through every one of these budgets. It's something I look forward to doing, um, meeting with uh, Stan, Dr. Woodard, and every principal, every school, every department, and developing a strong budget that uh, I feel confident in based on our actual, our data in Skyward uh, after it's been combed through. Um, and, and establishing a budget and then having a, a different ground. But like you said, with with my prior experience, um, I've, I did not develop this budget. So I don't know, and, and quite frankly, I don't think I have the expertise to turn around and, and tell Ron or Stan or, or Amanda to say, hey, you know, I know you did your budget for the full year and you think this is what you need, but can I have some <laughs> to get to move over here and 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 deal with that? Because uh, I, and I don't know they're here, but if I ask them, I, I would say that they're they're like, oh, we don't have. Well, nobody any, ever wants any. to give any money up for yeah. their budget. I mean, nobody ever comes right. to us. I, I will. I mean, I would be willing to bet you that you know when we go through the budget process, nobody is going to have a decrease in their budget, even if they had a, if they didn't spend as much as their budget said last year. I mean, that's what we saw at the end of last year was that people had surpluses in their budget that rolled into mm -hmm. fund balance. So that's why I'm just saying this is so negligible in the grand scheme of things for our budget yeah. that I just feel like asking somebody to find 0.01 per, you know, percent is not really a big ask. Right. I mean, I understand if we're saying find me, you know, a million dollars right. or even $100,000, but we're asking for a pretty insignificant fraction of that, I would say. Um, it has the same impact wherever it comes from. They, they all do roll into the GP fund balance. Right. Uh, I, I see where you're coming from. It doesn't uh, look pretty to take it out of fund balance. It looks like, hey, we're just asking for more money um, out of our reserve. So uh, I can understand that. Um, all of our revenues and expenditures run through there at the end of the year. Uh, but, but if 
you know, we are under, um, say we get a revenue that we didn't expect or we end up saving money where we didn't expect, we could bring this back and do another budget amendment, adding the money back to fund balance. Sounds good. Um, the, the good news is here is that if you look at the financials, our fund balance has improved. Mm -hmm. The picture is much improved. And, and, and hopefully it will continue with that trend uh, now that we, we're kind of getting a hold on this. So uh, I understand where Ms. Parker's coming from, and I think we all don't want to spend any of that fund balance so we don't have to. But, uh, but at understand. this point, I think that this is probably a necessity. I, I have one more point. Mm -hmm. is when we get our audit back, we'll have an, an accurate number of what we had expended last year. Um, I don't quite frankly feel confident in what's in there. Um, after an audit, I would feel much more confident to see, uh, and you can see the schedule of detailed expenditures within the audit of what was actually expended. The audit always changes your final expenditures, your final revenue. Uh, due to accounts payable, accounts receivable, changes in fixed assets. There's many things that go into uh, an audit and after audit adjustments and the audit is reported, which I, I hope to see them finished a lot sooner this year. Uh, we would have a good base uh, to go off of. So. Is there any other questions or discussion? Okay, then the motion, there's a motion on the floor. Um, Let's vote. <laughs> okay, and that motion does pass. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the discussion of uh, RFP uh, to perform an outside agency to perform a salary study for positions in the district. Okay. Is there any discussion? This was part of our work session, and I, I, I don't know who asked to have it pulled out, but is there any discussion about it? Uh, my question is, how are we going to pay for it? Let's approve. Yes, have a motion. Is there a motion to approve? Hmm? So moved. All right. Ms. Parker moves. Is there a second? Mr. Beaver seconds the motion. All right. My question is, once again, this is an issue of where is the money going to come from to pay for it? I should have got here when uh, we had planned to take this these funds out of fund balance. I was asked um, by Amanda to take them out of my budget um, during this, and, and there was an email chain about that. But I don't feel at this time that I can sacrifice funds that I may end up needing in a huge consolidation. Um, I do expect to have savings and hope to turn those savings into fund balance. Um, but at this time, it, it's a, an estimate um, based off of me not needing things that I might need <laughs> um, and, and changes. But w we looked for other sources. Um, Amanda reached out to me looking for other sources. Um, but at this time, uh, we felt that the fund balance was strong enough at this point to go ahead and take 24, th not to exceed 24,100 if approved. So it would increase line item 141-725-20-399 uh, by 24,100 and come out of fund balance 141-39000. Are there any other discussion or questions? Then uh, Mr. Dudley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, what group of employees are, are we doing the study on? Are we doing it on all, all uh, employees or, or, or what? Mr. 
The price of 24000 or 21000 is for all employees. That includes substitute employees, food service employees, all of our licensed and support staff employees. Um, if you were to want to take a section of employees out of that, of course, that would make the amount less. But that quote was based on every staff member in the district. Well, I mean, that's that's what I would like. I mean, I, I don't want to just do, do the professional employees. I, I think all of our uh, employees deserve a study to determine where, where they uh, lie. Uh, in pay compared with other groups and so that's what I need to know thank you okay seeing no lights then are we ready to vote Motion, that motion passes. The last uh, item under new business is the one we added to the agenda, and that was on the uh, changing the calendar for the school year uh, 1920. Um, Mr. Lane, do you need to want to come? Do any, we have questions about that or any discussion about it? Uh, Ms. Marinci. Um, I have a, a problem with just changing something because someone asked us to change it. Um, this was set up by a committee that we put together. They went through it, um, came up with the school calendar for two years. Um, it's been um, posted. It's also been um, printed and the, the print is um, the printed cards are out throughout the district. Um, and I just think it's setting a, a, a precedent what if uh, somebody else that's having an event came and asked us to give our kids that day off? Are we willing to do that? Um, we've incurred money, printing fees, and that type of thing. And the reason that we did it was so that people could plan ahead. So just because, um, and, I, and I don't believe that on that Friday that they um, opened the fair until afternoon. So we're talking two hours. That's just, that, that's my opinion on it. Am I, did I understand that it would be closed on, there would be a PD day on the day after, a weekday, not on Friday, that would be moved? Is, am I not? I think we, I think the calendar says that we're off on Tuesday and they want to change it to Friday. I thought it was the Friday opposite. before. I thought it was the opposite. Huh? Let's, let's go. Regardless, I don't think it makes any difference that we've set that calendar. We've set it for two years. And if after the two years you or even next year, if you want to look at it again, but once the committee has set something just because you have a group that have an event that want to make more money on that, you know, that day. And like I said, we have events, this county has events all the time. Are we willing to change it for other events? I, I'm not speaking for or against. I think that Mr. Lang, tell me if I'm wrong, the Murray County Fair is always, it is so that the kids could have a day at the fair and given tickets and all that sort of thing. What, what are the days that? Yes, ma'am. It would uh, currently move from Tuesday, September the 3rd to Friday, August the 30th. So there's still, we still have Labor Day. Uh, school is closed on the 2nd. Um, so it would move to the Friday before from the, from the following Tuesday. And the idea was, is that's, that's the end of the fair. And so that's like what they call my day at the fair. They changed the fair. Yeah. Is that they changed the date for the fairs. Am I correct? Mm. Mr. Lang, somebody please tell me what's correct here. So that would be the last, that Friday would be the last day of the fa fair or it's the beginning of the fair? I was not in the discussion with the fair. Uh, I'm only representing the district as far as the uh, process with the uh, calendar. 
Um, so I was I had zero discussions with the fair. Uh, but what I'm hearing is they're, they're requesting a change uh, so that the students will be out on that Friday. Um, we would also have to uh, go uh, and present this back to the state because they approved our uh, calendar. So there's a process there that we will have to go through. Um, any other questions? I mean, if, if, if we decide to do this, we have to kind of start over with the uh, state and get this all approved again. Mr. Sam. I feel like the, if the fair board wishes this next year, whomever's on the committee, either reach out to them and let them know that they're meeting. But I'm with Ms. Morency, I don't, I don't see the need in us changing our calendar. We would be more than happy to uh, uh, consider those type of events, uh, you know, put it in part of the process and discussions. Um, the next time we start next next year to uh, work on the next two-year calendar. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mike. You're welcome. Right, Ms. Parker, I'm sorry, I can't see it. So. I know, sorry. There's so many people in between me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just... It's, 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 I know, I know. I know how difficult it is. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make one suggestion because I actually was looking on the website for the next year's calendar and I didn't see it for a while even though we had approved it so I had to go back to our minutes to find it so and it may be because it hadn't been approved by the state or whatnot but I feel like if we set a two-year calendar then I feel like that should be listed on our website so because I think if it had been done the first year they might would have come to us earlier to where we could have made an adjustment much quicker. Um, I think when we're setting it for a two-year period, our calendar is only as good as the information that we're given and only as good as the, the people that we have at the table that know the different events that are involved. And I don't know that we necessarily had those people at the table to, to tell us. I think Murray County Public Schools works with the fair. I think Ms. Ventura, she has students that go to the fair. My my children have gotten us, you know, a, a pass to go to the fair, um, for me to take them to the fair. I think it's a great thing that we should support. If we're going to send things home with our kids, then I think we need to reach out to those partners to make sure that we, too, are being a good partner. This may not be the time, but hopefully we can get those people um, at the table in the future. A absolutely. There was a great suggestion at the last work session that, you know, all the kind of activities or whatnot that go on in the county, if we can kind of bring that together the next time we sit down and, and have that conversation so that we can see globally the things that are going on. As best we can, yeah. yes. But that was a great suggestion. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Lang. Okay, okay there's a motion and a second. Uh, is, is there any other discussion? Then let's vote. We can take a voice vote, too, if that would help. Is that okay? What's the motion on this one? Motion to amend the council calendar. To amend the 1920 uh, calendar to move from the 3rd to the 30th, mm -hmm. uh, the PD day or the... Yeah. Now let's just do a roll call vote. Um, Ms. Parker? Okay. Mr. Sims? I vote no. Mr. Beaver? Mr. Howlox, no. Ms. Marinci? No. Mr. Dudley? No. That motion does not pass. All right. There are some FYI items. I would just want to, uh, some of the items will also move forward on our work agenda. One of those is the discussion of diploma, and I have appointed an ad hoc committee, uh, kind of excited that we have been able to get a community uh, committee that will meet. Ms. Marinci is going to chair it. Uh, Chad Howell will be a member of it. Dr. Marzak, Tommy Schuyler will be a member. Don Morrow, a commissioner. Craig Harris will be a member, and Will Evans as a Murray Alliance, and I think that'll be a good cross-section. And I've asked that they can try to meet prior to our work session so that we can maybe discuss some of the preliminary uh, talk in those meetings as how we're going to move forward with diploma 
what, what can we do, what, where are the resources, what are the financial needs, and so forth. So it, it's an important committee that I consider that all of us on the board are part of. It'll be something that'll have to be posted because of the Sunshine Law, and all of us, I would hope, could attend and, and hear those discussions and be part of them. Uh, but I'm just giving you that information uh, as FYI. The collaborative conferencing as well, uh, I, I just want to give you those names again so that you know who our team is. Uh, Jim Pennings will serve as chair. I will serve as vice chair. Uh, David Moore, Denny Beavers, and Will Sims will be the board members on the collaborative conferencing team. Uh, Dr. Marzak, Dr. Woodard, Dr. Alexander, and um, Ms. Powell, the elementary, um, Spring Hill Elementary principal will be uh, principal on it, and I think we'll be a very strong team and look forward to uh, uh, meeting with the MCEA team in January. Now, anything else? Ms. Marinci. Um, I think that we had included on that diploma um, three principals. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, you're right. I'm Dr. Sorry. Jackson, um, Dr. Um, Mr. Ford, and Ms. Sparrow. I thank you for making that correction. I, I wrote these down rather quickly, and uh, yes, we did. We, we have a high school and elementary and a, a middle, middle school, school principal as well. So I think we'll have really good representation and hopefully some good discussion and, and good ideas how to move forward and so that we have all the stakeholders are present and uh, discussing and helping us with this as well. Any other uh, FYIs that we need to, any uh, hope you all had a Great Thanksgiving. It is 6.52. Is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Anyone opposed? All right, then that motion carries. <laughs> oh my gosh, now. Hey, Donna.